What's up y'all, Jonathan here with my first video on my new channel, Novice Networking. Today I'm going to share with you a walkthrough on building a basic home or small office network. At the end of the walkthrough, you will have the basic fundamentals to connect everything you see right here, from smartphones, desktops, to IoT devices, that's Internet of Things. This includes home automation stuff from Amazon Echoes to Nest thermostats. So let's get started. Starting from the top of this diagram and working our way down, you will see at the very top is the ISP, which is an acronym for Internet Service Provider. Once you order service from them, the signal has to be converted using a modem. Then that converted signal is distributed using a router. And this is to route the signal. Then from there, this is what you interact with. You get on the internet with a device. That is the high level overview. Now let's discuss each step of the process in detail. Starting with ordering from an ISP. To get internet to your residence or small office, you need to order internet from an ISP or AKA internet service provider, like what you're seeing here. After calling them or walking into a retail store and signing up, they will set you up with an appointment for installation. Take the appointment if, if you can, since this is the easiest way to get the internet connection to your home and if there are any connectivity issues, the technician can address it upon their installation. Once the internet signal is being sent to your house or small office, the signal has to be converted to a signal that your devices can understand. Kind of like how radio works. A broadcaster will send a signal out on the radio waves and your radio in your car or vehicle will convert the data traveling on radio waves into something you can understand, like music or whatever you're listening to on the radio. The internet service provider sends the, the home or your small business a signal and receives signals but needs a modem to convert the incoming or outgoing data to an understandable information language understood by us. Modems are usually provided by the ISP. From there, then you hook up a router. Some, some ISPs have all of these in one unit or separate where you can buy your own router. Both will serve the same purpose. A router is different from a modem where a router will take the information or data and forward data traffic that is supposed to go out to the internet or keep internal traffic from leaving your network like a computer to, a, to printer data or computer to computer traffic. If you would like to know more and have an in-depth understanding of this, let me know and I will produce a video on it. It's pretty interesting on how all, the, all this works or networks. <laughs> uh, but you know, back to our, our walkthrough. You will need a router to hook up several computers or devices. The router will remember which device is requesting what information and where to route the traffic accordingly. If you want wireless connectivity, then you will need a Wi-Fi device, which is built into most routers, like some of what you see here. Wi-Fi connectivity is a beast of a topic, and I will create a video on that subject alone at a later time. So here is the diagram again, and I have explained to you from the top down to the router. Now let's put this all together. Here is a diagram showing a cable connection. The cable from the wall connects to the modem, then to the router. The ports are usually labeled and plug the modem into the router, usually labeled internet. Then you will see the other ports usually labeled one, two, three, and four. You may have an all-in-one unit, which is a modem slash router. The way you know is if there is several ethernet ports on the back of the unit, and there should be some labeling. 
Either way, just pause this video and hook it all up. Now, just plug in the power and connect your computer using an ethernet cable to one of the numbered ports, like port number one or two, and then you are good to go. For those of you that have a broadband connection or DSL, this is not cable, so if you have cable, refer to the earlier diagram prior to this one. Take a look at these diagrams and the concept is very similar. From the wall to the modem, and it should be labeled internet or something of that nature, not the phone port. Then connect the modem with an ethernet cable to the router and again, it should be labeled internet. Here again, you might have an all-in-one unit, modem slash router. If so, then you don't have to connect the modem to the router since they are all built together. Now just plug in the power and connect your computer with an ethernet cable and you are good to go. Use one of the numbered ports on the router. It should say one, two, three, or four. Next up is the most popular internet connection of all, Wi-Fi. So far, we have now connected from the ISP, to the modem, to the router, and your wired devices. So if you have a wireless device like a smartphone, like an iPhone, tablet, a laptop, iPad, they connect wirelessly with Wi-Fi. You can set up the network so that you can connect with or without a password. It is absolutely horrible to set it up without a password because you leave yourself open to a very vulnerable, easy cyber attack. Even with a password, you are vulnerable. So let's not do any easy passwords and keep your digital world safe. Many wireless routers come with a unique password and it is on the label uh, similar to the labels you see here. If you would like to customize this network and password information, please refer to the manufacturer's website or manual. I will cover if you are using the info on the label. The router will have a network name and a password. So take a look at the label and remember it exactly. Now find that network name on the wireless settings of the device you are connecting. Then tap or click on that network name. A password requirement will show up and enter the password from the label. Be very careful because it is cap sensitive, meaning it matters if the letter is capitalized or not. Take your time. Now, the device will try to connect, and then it will be connected if you enter the password correctly. If you try several times, then the password is probably wrong, or you chose the wrong network to try to connect to. There are many different networks showing from the neighbors all around you, so be sure the network matches exactly to what is on the label. The nice thing is, the device remembers the network connection and password and will automatically connect the next time the device detects the network and you don't have to do this again. Now you can connect any wireless device to your network and the future is extremely bright. IoT, AKA Internet of Things is the future and literally billions of devices will connect wirelessly in the next few years. They all connect to a network with a password. You are ready. Congrats. Let me know what your thoughts are about this video in the comments below. Drop that thumbs up and smash on that subscribe. I will be diving deep into IoT devices and networking gear next. So make sure to set that alert so you get my email when the next video drops. I try to put a lot of thought into these videos so please help me out by subscribing. If you would like me to cover something or if you have any questions, please feel free to drop that in the comments section below. 
Until next time, Jonathan out.